Using AI to assist with my project management in Obsidian is going to be a game changer. The fact that I can just use AI to code a new view for me depending on a new project that I'm working on is incredibly powerful. In today's video, I'm gonna walk through how I use AI tools with a little bit more of an advanced mode and basis, getting more into the actual syntax on how you can structure the bases as part of a markdown file, where you can use AI to help you build those base structures with all of the different views for you and then use the AI tool as a project manager that understands your project architecture. I was able to ask it, can you please give me some more complicated formulas? And it just gave me a full code here. And all I have to do is click copy and go back to this base here, paste. And then I have a full project where it just automatically built all of the properties already in here for me. Now it understands specifically the format of my projects. Now it can take in my new files and then give me an updated roadmap here. I can click build project and then boom. I have all of the files on the side here. It's automatically built in the base. And what's cool is it's applied the template for every single one of these. Hi, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutes, and welcome to today's video, how you can use artificial intelligence. You can use AI tools to automatically build bases for you and help you manage the projects using the bases core plugin. I'm excited to walk through how I set this up for myself and how you can do the same. I've actually been using Obsidian to organize my projects a lot over the last couple of months. So this timing has been perfect for me to be able to properly build bases in with project management functionality to the projects that I've already been working on in Obsidian. If you find this video helpful, I would love if you would please consider liking and subscribing as your support really means a lot to me and you do continue enabling me to make these videos. So thank you very much. Also, I wanna note that I will be making all of the bases that I talk about and build in this video available for my paying YouTube members. So if you want to get an actual copy of this template so you don't have to start from scratch, please consider joining my membership and I will be happy to give you that template. Now let's dive into project management using Obsidian Bases. I've made a couple other videos on bases. In video one, I did an intro to bases where I talked a lot more about what they are, how to get them set up, the key features, practical examples, and then a comparison of bases to data view and Notion. In video two, I walked through the new features which there's quite a few updates here that if you're interested in learning more about the philosophy of what's happening with bases and where it's going and why I think it's now actually getting to the point where you can replace Notion with it, then I recommend checking out video two. Focus on specifically building a project and task management base. So today's video, we'll get into phase three where I'm actually gonna show you how I use AI to assist both with building bases and planning out my projects. This has been one of the most powerful ways that I've found to boost my ability to keep up with my projects and actually get my tasks done. So I'm excited to show you how this all fits together. If we go back to the base syntax here, there's an example of how the YAML, how the file actually looks here. So all of this is a base. If we go back to the all projects, basically what this looks like is this string of text here. It looks like code because it is code. They've actually modified it to be closer to JavaScript. But if you don't know how to code, that's no problem. Because what we can do, if we open this file in Finder, we can see that there's this projects.base file. And if we just choose open with text edit, this produces the overarching structure of this particular base. So you can see that it has the filters for the overarching table view, has formulas, it has all the properties that we've included in here and it has a list of all the different views. So it has this overarching view, which is our main table titled all projects with these filters contains projects. It has an order of all the properties that we have included the sort functionality. We also have the project embed view. We have the all tasks view. So you can see how the code here is actually generated. So what we could do, for example, let's open up the tasks base as well. Show in finder. I can open this with text edit. And now what we have here is we have the full structure of what I've just created for this overarching tasks view, right? With the priority status, tags, due date, started, days since, all these calculations. And you can see here that there's these formulas. So what I can do is I can just copy this formula section, go over to the formula section here in my project space and paste it. And then when I save this, if I go back to my project view, now I should have the option to introduce days since and days remaining. These are both here already. And now by just toggling these on, if I go back to the project space, again, open it in Finder, open with text edit, we now have those formulas there. And the file has been updated to show that these formulas are in this particular order. So what's kind of cool here is once you've figured out that you have a particular view and you've built that in one table versus another, if you're in the same table, you can just go to projects, click on the right side here, and then click duplicate view. 
and that'll bring in all of your existing properties. But if you're wanting to bring, for example, everything you've generated in your tasks view over to your projects view, then I can go down to, for example, all tasks, where we can see on the side here that we've got type table, name, all tasks, and that's it, and tags. And rather than generating this new table on the side in our projects view with all tasks with these filters, for example, I can just go here and I can just copy this entire section and click paste and then just remove the table and all tasks. And now if I click save, we should be able to go here to our all tasks view. And you can see that it's brought in all of the properties that we've established already in the tasks view. So this is kind of cool that you can now build your base once, for example, what you want tasks to be. And then you can just go find the file and copy the code into your other bases and it will automatically update. But if you don't want to do that yourself, if you want to instead have AI do this, what we can do, and this is what I was using to help me, is we can go over to, for example, Notebook LM. So what I did here, and if you're interested, I have a video that walks through this, is I went to Discover Sources, and I specifically looked for the latest base update and clicked Submit. And this produced a bunch of relevant sources. And then I also went and created a page copy of the basis syntax from the base website and dropped it in here. And then I started asking Notebook LM to design projects based on what it knew on all of this information, for example, specifically the 1.9.3 update. And by the end of this, it gave me a list of how this could be structured. So I can now just copy this order, for example, and drop this into a new code base inside of Obsidian. I'll show you this, so I create a new note, and I can just click the three dots, put base, and then I would just have to click paste and Notebook LM did a pretty good job of giving me what this should look like and explaining how it all works, but it didn't do a perfect job coding. So then I took the output of Notebook LM, I copied this here, and I went over to Google AI Studio. And Google AI Studio, because you can use Gemini 2.5 Pro, does a much better job at coding. So then I was able to ask it, for example, can you please give me some more complicated formulas? Can you please include all of these features? I want it particularly to show the cards view, the all projects view with all these filters, all the properties we talked about. And it just gave me a full code here. And all I have to do is click copy and go back to this base here, paste. And then I have a full project where it just automatically built in all projects. I have it specifically for coding, writing, my next actions, the app I'm working on, and uh, the embed view for tasks for specific projects. So within all of these views, it has all of the properties already in here for me. And to look at it again, I just click on the code block and I'm able to see the code itself all inside of here. So this is just another way that you can do this where you can kickstart your base, but you'll notice this is just an inserted base here. So test insert base, this note here itself doesn't actually have the base file property. This is just an embedded file. We'd be able to look at it in Finder and we can see that it has this code block with the full syntax of this base. So I don't want to get into this too much because it's going to be very personal and how you want to build this. But I just want to show you that everything I did today, that whole process could have been really streamlined by just using something like Google AI Studio, where I was able to just drop in the basis syntax file and then go back and forth with the AI until it produced, you can see I had a pretty big conversation. I tested out a bunch of different things until I got to one that worked. And then I was able to just paste that in here. And what's cool is I could, for example, go get this code and rather than doing tick, tick, tick and base, so I can just insert this. If I wanna create an actual base file, I can now go back to my actual vault. I can just duplicate this file, task base two, and I could call this AI studio generated dot base. And you can see that it's created this AI studio generated dot base, but this is just a duplicate file. So now I would have to go open with text edit, grab my code from Google AI studio, and then paste in the full formula here and click save. Now, if I close this and go back to my AI studio generated base, you can see that it has the actual base file with all the project view and everything. So honestly, this is a super powerful way for you to not only create these bases yourself, but now that Google AI studio knows exactly the format of my structure, I can start having a conversation with it that specifically maps out the projects that I want to build. So I could say, if I'm starting my 100 days of writing project, what would be the best way for me to organize tasks and articles that would fit within the latest structure of our Obsidian base? So you can see now it's thinking, it's going through, it's clarifying article definition, 
And there you go, it's actually going through and operating as a project manager for me, saying that articles are the tasks for my 100 days of writing challenge as a single top level project with individual articles that will be a task that link back to the main project. So you can see here, it's even giving me templates that I can use that will automatically match aside from the due date, which I had modified to do the proper calculations. I could just copy this now, go over to Obsidian, go over to my 100 days of writing, insert new node of article one, click on it, and I can just click paste. And right away it brings in tags, status, importance, due date, writing stage that I'm at, and document type. So these are some new properties that it's introducing. So I hope that just shows you, again, you can get as deep in this as you want to, but I'm able to use AI to help code and specifically walk me through the project. So it ends up working really nicely that the basis syntax is effectively a form of JavaScript. That's a little bit different, but in a way that the AI can really help assist you with organizing your projects and coding the bases themselves. Okay, so now that you've used AI to actually figure out what type of project architecture you want, for example, like my epic story and task, you can take it one step further. Rather than just using the AI to help you build the base itself, you can now start to use the AI as an actual project manager. So what do I mean by that? I'm working on a project right now where I'm building a couple different Obsidian plugins at the same time. And I've realized that it would be a lot easier for me to just build them all in one spot. So this is called a mono repo, where I take my different code bases and I put them all in one spot, and then I can start to share the code between them, which makes building each plugin a lot easier and more cohesive. So I built out this full project here. You can see here's my project files, here are my epics, the stories, the tasks. This is all using the system that I talked about in the last video. And I actually used this system to build out a new plugin called Architect or Project Architect that allowed me to build this side panel here that matches the base. So I can use this to go through and when I click check, it completes the story and all the subtasks within that story. So how did I build this? Well, I went to Google AI Studio. I had a bunch of conversations in Obsidian, which are all these files here. And then I could just drag all of these files into Google AI Studio or Notebook LM or ChatGPT, whatever system it is that you actually want to use. I say, I'm giving you some context files. I want you to analyze all of them very thoroughly and then reply why, and I'll give you next instructions. So basically this has all of my different project related files in one spot that I've now dropped in here, including the roadmaps, and then I used that to build out this mono reaper migration project, taking all of the different plugins, all the different roadmaps for the plugins that I'm building, and then combining it in one spot, and then using my epic story and task outline format to have it produce the roadmap for me that I then use the project architect plugin to convert into this living project display on the side here. And I'll explain this more in the next video. I'm actually making the Project Architect plugin available to my paying YouTube members, specifically the Augmenters tier for now, while I'm beta testing to work out a few bugs. Then I'll move it up to the True Fans tier, and then finally I'll make it available for everyone in Obsidian. So if you're interested in getting early access to test this out, having this project ecosystem that directly works with the Bases plugin or with DataView, you could do the exact same thing with DataView, then please consider joining my paid membership, specifically the Augmenters for now, and I'll let you know when it becomes available for the True Fans. But now you can see the model has just said why. And what I can do is I can say, based on what you know about my project ecosystem, plugins, goals, and context, can you please give me an updated strategy for migrating to a monorepo? The report should be in the form of a roadmap that matches the epic stories and task formats we have developed. So not only did I use Google AI Studio to build out my plan and the architecture of the project with these epic stories and tasks, and then use it to help me build out my base, like you can see here where I have all of these different views that I talked about in the last video, this is all just code that the AI was able to understand. And now it understands specifically the format of my projects. Now it can take in my new files and then give me an updated roadmap here. So you can see here, it's got Epic one, all the stories, Epic two, and it walks me through step-by-step step all of my goals and how I'm gonna work on this. I can see by looking at it that it has tasks and then each task is listed as 1.2 by one. That's not the format I want. I want each task having its own name. So I just went down and said, that was good, but can you please add an intention for each task, update the format and give me the roadmap again. So this is where you can go through and you can update your format, update your roadmap, go back and forth with the AI, working on your project, finessing it until it's in a state that you're happy with. And then here we go, it just updated it and now has the story, the goal, the task, all of the stuff I'm looking for. So I can take this now, just copy this here, copy Markdown, go over to Obsidian again, rather than just dealing with my monorepo migration project V1, I can now create a new file. 
call it v2 and then paste in the new project. And now I can right click on it, click build from roadmap, project name, we'll call this mono repo migration v2. It already has my settings loaded. Again, I'll get into the project architect functionality in the next video, but I can click preview project and right away it builds out the entire system for myself. I can click build project and then boom, I have all of the files on the side here. It's automatically built in the base. And what's cool is it's applied the template for every single one of these. So I have dedicated templates that I've given out as part of my project management basis kit that's available for my Pang members. And if I click on this, you can see it's automatically pulling in all of the information. It's mapping it to the project and it includes all of the children that are a result of this particular project. Same with the story, same with the task. So this is just a cool way where I can use AI to take in all of the context that I'm building with my project, have it develop the roadmap for me. And then now I can use the project architect plugin to build out every single file with the proper template. And I can go through here and I can say, oh, you know what, actually there was another story I wanted here. Maybe I needed to add a new story and I can choose here. Let's call this make video about Epic one. And if I click create, it's now just added a new story here that's built into the project architect view on the side here, but it's also now added to my base. So there's this really cohesive sync happening between the project on the side here and the base that I'm using as my dashboard. So I hope that gives you a little bit more context on not only how you can use AI to help you structure what you want your project architecture to be, but then how you can use it to build out the roadmap for that project and use a tool like the Project Architect plugin to convert that roadmap into individual tasks, epics, and stories so that you can begin just working through your project and start checking things off as you go. And then when you're all done, you can just click the archive button and it will mark all the files as done and move it over to an archive folder here. So again, I'll get into all this more a little bit later, but I hope that this helps you see how you can work with AI as a project manager. I can now go through and I can update this roadmap and I can figure out what my next steps are. And then I just have to add a couple files to my system without having to start from scratch again. And then if I wanna add a new view, I can just have a conversation with the AI, get it to build out that base format and then go back to Obsidian and just add a new base and reference that base within my project templates. And then when I use the architect plugin, it applies all of the templates directly to the files themselves. So I don't have to do it. And I can just focus more on executing on the tasks rather than organizing them. I hope that this video helped you understand how you can start using the Bases plugin in Obsidian, the core plugin, to actually manage your projects in Obsidian in a much more Notion-like manner. Using AI to assist with my project management in Obsidian is going to be a game changer. The fact that I can just use AI to code a new view for me depending on a new project that I'm working on is incredibly powerful. And then I can copy all of those views and move them between my different bases depending on my style of project. A reminder to check out the What is Bases video if you're interested in learning more about how this tool will fit in with my bigger philosophy on how I see note taking and AI working together. And also I recommend checking out the most recent video that I made on the updates to Obsidian, where I go through some of the features I talked about today in much more depth. If you found this video helpful, I would love if you would please consider liking and subscribing. I'm working on making YouTube my full-time career, so any support is very much appreciated. A reminder that I'll be making all of the bases that I built today as templates available for my paying YouTube members. So if you wanna get access to these and not have to start from scratch with your project management system, please consider joining my paying membership. I'm gonna go deeper into my overarching system in Obsidian and how I've been taking notes to build out my YouTube videos, write articles, and generally just do research. I recommend checking out my playlists on AI and Obsidian. If you wanna expand your note-taking system even more, if you wanna get deeper into the research side and the writing side, I recommend checking out my videos on Obsidian and project management. I have a whole playlist. And I also have more templates available for my paying members getting more into what I call molecular Zettelkasten, which is an atomic note-taking system that I've expanded into being a molecular one. I think that this note-taking system, the molecular Zettelkasten system, is gonna fit perfectly with the project management in Obsidian that's now enabled by Basis. So I'm pretty excited to start tying these two together. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.